What's going on, everybody? It's Jeffy Hart here. Here to talk about Native Control's latest offering for the Ableton Push. It's PXD Live Plus. Oh, yeah. This is an add-on to the PXT Live remote script, and it is phantasmal. It has so many cool things, and I'm going to show you a very small number of them. The things that I like the most, because that's what I'm going to do. So you install this, and you do that by reading the directions and installing it the way that's true. Install it. And that's pretty easy. Once you do that, you'll have it installed. And you go to user mode, so this is push on its own. That's cool. But I wish that I could use these pads however I wanted to. Oh, okay, let's go to user mode. And then to get into the... Uh, the Easy now. To get into the cool fancy stuff, we're going to hold session and click on the note view. And it's going to load this custom mode that has been created. And it is this... Uh, I have it set to load to the scale tone. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but those are the scale tone chords. And up here, you can change a bunch of stuff. Like you can have it, uh, you can play power chords. So here it's on. Here's power chords off. And you can see it's adding these, uh, you know, the octave and the fifth below it. And then, of course, you can change keys right here. You can go between major and minor. And it just does all that automatically for you. Hello! And then you can turn on your sevenths. And what's amazing is that you can do all those types of things. Uh, okay, not all of them, but the seventh and the power chord and, and a couple of other can be per pad, which means you can create some really cool stuff. And that's not very necessary for the scale tone side of things, but it will be necessary in some of the other modes. These buttons right here are your inversions. So there's my C chord, and then I want to go to F. So what I'll do is I'll invert the C chord. And that sounds a lot more like what a piano player would play, because they, they keep the notes very close together so that their hands don't have to go all over the place because if they do if they don't invert chords they get made fun of by other piano players and that would just be terrible so you can do all the different inversions turn the power chords off you can hear it a little bit and of course up here on the top half you can see that this is being you know it's reflecting what we are playing and then it's also playable by single note, so you can create... Got my sustain pedal down here. Right, so now you can kind of play the piano. You got the chords in the lower hand, and then you can do stuff like that in the top half, and that uh, I think is pretty pretty fantastic and you can emulate a lot of keyboard stuff or you can just create parts I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord but you never cared for music do ya it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall It actually works. So, you know, you practice and you do some stuff and uh, it sounds like music. So that's that's very exciting. Now let's talk about some of the other modes. If you hold down select, you can see here we can choose between drum, capture, chord, scale tone chord, user, and meters. 
and we're going to go over to the chord mode. And this is more flexible than the scale tone chords because you can play any chord you want. In fact, these chords up here, which you might not be able to read, but we have minor, major 7th, minor 7th, minor 11th. These are user definable, which is so awesome because you can put whatever chords you want up there. So he gives you all these preference files in which you can decide how this works for you. And so I have a whole bunch of preferences set in here in addition to these chords because these are the chords that I like. These are the chords that I typically play. And so I, I have them. He ships them with a, a default of other chords and yeah, that's cool. Okay, so here's how this works. You play it a pad and this is major. But if I wanted to change this to like an add to chord, and now whenever I go back to that chord, it's always going to be the add to. And if I want to invert that, it's going to go back to that. So each, each setting is memorized per chord. And that allows you to create some wicked chord progressions very quickly, easily, very intuitive. Inverted. All right. It's just that easy. Create what I think is, uh, is cool sound and stuff. These are playable. If you know how to play the piano. Those are, you know, it's like that. So instead of being completely in key, now you have access to the chromatic notes. And we can go octave up and down. Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. And you see that's being reflected in the uppers. We can also bring these up and down by holding shift and going. So something that's cool, I think, is in scale tone mode. Let's go shift octave down. And now we can create uh, bass lines underneath. Or you can create leads on top, but uh, this way you can do either or. Very flexible. Nice work, straight. I like your style. Okay, now we're going to go over here and let's talk about the. Okay, let's talk about capture mode since we're dealing with tonality at this time. Capture mode is a whole nother level. You can create a clip and you can capture all the notes and assign those to the pads. And you have you know, however many pages of notes. So uh, here is a clip that I have made. I'll fold it, you can see the notes. And so, you know, what Stray likes to do is capture chords from MIDI files that are available on the web. That's a genius idea. What I like to do is create these chord shapes and uh, inversions and, and all that stuff to further emulate how a keyboard player would play. And so here's, that's my root note. And then I have couple different variations of the C chord. So kind of like how a, a keyboard player would play his left hand and then he'd riff on the right. I have that for each so I got one, five, six, four and uh, here's just an octave. And so you can set this how, uh, up however you want and then you just save it a clip. So how would I do? Let's go out of here. Let's create one just there's a G in there and I'm gonna hit capture and now it's just it's, it's capturing whatever is in this clip and I apologize that this is not a great explanation for this but essentially whatever I put into this clip is gonna get laid out onto these pads so let's just do that super quick do a C so there's an octave A G. And so now when I hit capture, we have C, A, G, F. If I want to do this, capture again. All right, so it's as easy as that. So if you just save a clip with whatever sort of format you want, hit capture, it's basically like a preset. So, excuse me.
So I just, yeah, this is like, this is my jam right here, being able to create playable configurations. And uh, it just makes it fun to play. That's very cool. Now let's go over to drum mode. I'm going to go to use because we're still talking about it. I'm going to wait for drum mode. I barely know anything about it. So if we go over to the user mode, he gives you a preference file, a text thing that you can edit. Oh, here's the chord type. Anyway, you can decide every single note. Goodness. Every single note and every single color for this for the grid. And so you can set you can choose note, color, and MIDI channel. And so what I've done is, you know, here's an octave of this sound. Here's an octave of this. Here's an octave. So if you've seen my uh, complex drill playground video, that's basically what it's emulating. But this way, you don't, uh, you know, have this user mode where you do whatever you want, and you also have access to all the other PXT Live stuff uh, versus having to push. User. That makes any sense. So that's that's basically what we got, and you can just configure that however you want. And I think that's extremely useful. If you want these, because uh, one thing about the the push is native mode. So many so many pads are duplicated, like, and so it wastes a lot of space in my opinion. And I think that's great for playability in a in a certain respect. However, there are many instances in which we want to use every single pad for something different. And I enjoy being in those types of environments, and this allows you to do that. So let's take a look at the drums. And go to hold select, click on drum mode, and now here's the PXT Live Plus drum mode. All right, here's what happens. You can define different colors for the drum pads in a preference file. And I think this is really smart the way that he did this. You can do like any kick is going to get colored blue. Any snare is going to get colored green, and you can define those however you want. And so now here's my kick. There's my snare. Claps are half green. Toms are... So you can go into your drum rack and you can rename some stuff if necessary. Or, you know, obviously a lot of libraries, if it's a kick, it's going to say kick. So I, I think it's great to have the colors because then I know what I'm hitting. Cool. And now uh, each one of these is something different. You can lock these to, well, I think it's like whatever last pad you played, or you can lock it to, to whatever pad you want. So, so I have my main snare there. There's my second snare. And then these, these are called cycle pads. And you can define what pads they cycle through. So this is an awesome way to generate fills. So you just decide what's going to be your fill sounds and then whatever your rhythm is. Nice. Up here we have 16 grid of velocity or you can choose it to be pitch based on these things up here which is sweet, but then let's, it's, it's whatever your selected pad is. So if I click on this, now I have, and so you can do like a, so on and so forth. There's a lot of good reasons to use that, but if I put the kick, now I can do, yeah. 
I think the cool, my favorite thing is the cycle pads. I mean, to be honest, I w- and I do, I should have, man, when I was beta testing this, I barely played in the drum rack mode, but it would be nice to have these closer to home. Overall, man, it's cool. There's also a meters mode, which, uh, you know, check one. You can see that it's, it's following the meter. Let's go here. And this would be nice, I guess, if you just, you know, you're mixing and you want it to look pretty. And that's that. Now, there's uh, a zillion other features that I, I did not talk about. I just kind of went over a basic overview of those modes and uh, what I've been using them for. I have read the manual more than once in many different ways. And, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on with it. And I would encourage you to check it out if you think any of this was interesting. And uh, side note, during the beta testing, it was awesome. I had a lot of suggestions, and Stray listened to them all, and uh, why they wouldn't work, or just like straight up implemented them. And that was awesome. And so this has been a very exciting thing. I would encourage you to check it out. Give it a run for its money, and see what you can get. Thanks.